Well, you guys know we have a new trailer, which means we have a new set of problems. It's interesting how that all works. You think we buy something, we buy a camper, for example, to solve an issue or to help with an issue. And then, well, guess what? Now you have more issues. So right now, what we got here is there's a there's this bracket here and that actually is for the bed. And it looks like they've already uh, hooked something up because I, I believe it's just supposed to be this white channel. But now they also have this piece of silver aluminum uh, on the back of that. So unlike Las Vegas, I hope whatever happened in this bed left in this bed because I don't need anything staying that happened in this bed. So you can see this is how this one looks and it looks like it's it's in place. And then we come over here and we have this. And that really doesn't look good. And then also up there you can see that dangly dangly thing. We got this going on and I don't know if this is textbook. This appears that somebody got their hands on some caulk and actually that's kind of worse than I anticipated because I think I can already see wood. That's not good. So somebody took their white caulk and put it all over the place. I mean, I don't think you just throw your white caulk everywhere. That's, that's not good. That's not the right way to fix that. This seal, although it, it pinches out from the corner molding, I don't see any issues with that. I mean, like I said, just appearance. The problem is up here. However, as you work your way up to that other stuff, it seems to separate from the steel frame of the door. And then same with on the driver's side. So we gotta tear into this. It's only a matter of time before this thing leaks. What's funny is it's the same tools, but in a different garage. I think we're up to garage number four on this channel. Let's see how long this one lasts. when there's water in there. That's definitely not a good sign. That's all wet. I couldn't get one of the screws out, so hopefully it'll kinda just, there we go. I, I hope this ends somewhere near this area. I don't wanna be tearing this whole trailer apart. That sounded not too bad. That sounded not too bad either, but I could clearly see that there was, that wasn't penetrating any timber. I'm going to put this in numerical perspective. Imagine you see two problems. Well, then you dive into two problems and then you see the third problem and then the fourth problem, the fifth problem. And then all of a sudden, you run out of hands. Not good. Not good. This trailer needs work. The inside works. Why doesn't the outside work? Did the old slice a flathead in it and back it out. This one was completely roached. Luckily, only two of them have been like that so far. I'm going to build the roof so that way uh, the water can get behind this. And it wouldn't be an issue if there's there's no screw holes in here, but there's screw holes. Stupid, moron. Somebody looking out for job security. I gotta check back in with you guys because it's uh, gone south relatively fast. It's funny how a simple interior flaw is kind of alluding to a huge flaw on the exterior. Because now, you guys saw me take off that part. Now I'm working on taking off this part because <laughs> As I took off that first part, this is all rotten. And there's a board that goes horizontal. So I gotta see what's going on there. And also, the last thing you, you actually wanna see when you're uh, checking something out is duct tape. Nothing like duct tape. I don't think, uh, you know, when they say duct tape fixes everything, it actually usually fixes nothing. It's just a temporary fix, but 
you know, they put that on and then they put this on and then they put this on. So that was like the foundation of this job. It appears that they installed this board too. And it looks like even, even the sheathing is new because they have new deck screws. So I'm wondering if they just didn't redo this entire roof. But if you were that far, why wouldn't you just go a little bit further and get behind here and fix all of this? I guess I'll leave it to the guy who, who buys it next. Uh, me. I mean, when you're pulling stuff like this out, this is like Crush Carrier 1.0. We're on Crush Carrier 2.0. Shouldn't have that kind of stuff. 3D machines may have to re-engineer certain things because this is unacceptable. It's apparent that this is going to be like every other project. You have to take way more apart than anticipated and not only that, but you have to take it further apart so that way it's it's accessible. Because if you don't take off certain parts, then you're you're wasting more time trying to save time. So the first step towards success is to admit that you have a problem. We have a big problem. Not only that, but I have to manhandle this bed all by myself. That was cool. Well, I just created job security for my chiropractor. Kids. And hide your husbands because the beds are falling on everybody. I admire the ingenuity and the engineering on this. I mean, they used aluminum. I'll give them credit for that. It's just, you can't, you can't adhere something nice to a shitey foundation. It just doesn't work. Good foundations are needed. Hey, it's guys, this guy here, I gotta take the window out so that way I can peel more of this back. Otherwise, I'm gonna be fighting this the whole time. I don't wanna be fighting this the whole time. deck screw in there ah so he was already here too what the heck why would you not repair this right then if you were already here
they run a little better with the batteries on. Yeah. That should slap right in there. Bink. That's a mighty fine job. Well, since I had it that far, I figured I'd prime it and paint it again, put some new paint on it. 